Russian defense or Petrov defense is the not kind of an opening I would recommend for you to play for black. The reason is because all black is playing for in this opening is for a draw to hope to exchange pieces and uh, somehow draw to the game that and that's that's the like uh, that's that's what their dream is in this opening however um, and there's not too many positional strategical and good ideas and not much to learn while playing black this uh, with black this opening however if you are white e4 e5 knight f3 knight f6 what would I recommend to play what line there is a line you can learn how to play in a matter of minutes. Of course, there is knight takes e5, d6, knight f3, and knight takes e4. Of course, the line you can learn in, not in matter of minutes, in one minute is queen e2, queen e7, d3, then exchange queens and make a draw. But that's not what we want. We want simple line, but at the same time, we want to fight for advantage. So therefore, after knight takes e4, line I recommend strongly, knight c3. It looks like simple line, but it's a very sharp one. Black has basically here uh, two moves. One of them is knight f6, and one of them is knight takes c3. The other one. So the moves like d5 and bishop f5 are bad. Bishop f5, believe it or not, was played by Anand and he lost. That may be the only game he lost in his whole career under 10 moves. After queen e2, black is absolutely lost because they are losing the piece. Knight is pinned and if you go queen e7, then knight d5 attacking the queen, which has to protect c7 pawn and after queen d7, d3. So he just resigned there. Same thing will happen if black plays d5, then queen e2, and black must play bishop e7, and white wins a pawn. So let's quickly cover knight f6 move. Knight f6, you go d4, and after bishop e7, you go bishop g5, queen d2, and castle. You are ahead in development. There's a not much to talk about in this position. You are slightly ahead in development, so you have slight edge. That's all I can say about that continuation. However, knight takes c3, d takes c, bishop e7. That's the main continuation. And if black plays d5, then after c4, they're going to find themselves in a very difficult position. Now, Exchange is not acceptable for them because white has big advantage in development, position is open, and by no means you can call this position just because there are no queens on the board. That's not an end game. That's a middle game position and a very bad one for black. So um, after we play c4, if black plays bishop e6, then knight g5. And black is in lots of trouble here. So the move to play here, and the best move is bishop e7. And now white's plan is bishop e3, castle, queen d2, knight d7 or knight c6, and castling long. As you see, this is going to be a sharp game because kings are castled on opposite sides of the board. And when that happens in chess, normally it, it's kind of prediction that game is going to be sharp and both kings is going to be under attack. So white wants to play h3, g4, possibly develop later bishop on d3. Those are the main ideas. Knight e5 
is the main move in this position. We're going to go bishop e2, and that's what we want to play, e h3 and g4, and start an attack on the king side, and black will start attacking on the queen side. But after we go king b1, if, if bishop e6 and king b1, if black plays knight g4, then bishop d4, and after c5, we go h3, and on cd, hg. This may be a very dangerous position for black, because d takes c, queen takes c3, h file is open, white has a good compensation for a pawn, and good views for attack. Now, this is my strong recommendation, because I played it very many times, and I had absolutely tremendous results. I played it against players that knew that I was gonna I I, I was gonna play this. They prepared it, and they didn't do well. My student Eugene Perlstein, who is currently half grandmaster, but since he has made already grandmaster norm at least once, he played in the junior championships, and he, I remember he won some. He won every game, but some of them he won like under 20 moves. And he play, beat some top junior players in the country. So this is not easy to play against variation. Bishop e3, castle, queen d2, knight c6, castle. On bishop e6, you can go simply king b1. And later, you're going to go h3, g4, and try to roll whole king side. White has very clear plan and possibility, good possibility for king side attack. That's all I can tell you about Petro of Defense, because that's all I know about these variations, and it seems to be enough. That seemed to be enough for me for many, many years, and I hope that's going to be enough for you too, and you're going to have great success with it. Philidor defense is one of the most passive openings for black. That's not something I will ever recommend a player to play e4, e5, knight f3, d6. Playing like this, you are not going to learn much, and you are not going to get very active position. That I can guarantee you. So all you're hoping for is successful defense. And when you defend, then you may equalize. And if that's what you're playing for, that's not a good idea. However, for white, again, d6, d4. Here are two possible moves for black. One is knight f6, and the other one is the main move, which is knight to d7. After knight f6, I would recommend the line knight d takes e, knight takes e4, and knight d2. Now that will guarantee you some advantage, little advantage, but stable one. If knight c5, then knight b3. Knight takes b3, pawn takes, you are better developed, you're going to go bishop d3 next and castle. Very simple game. Same happens on knight takes d2. Bishop takes d2, d takes e, you can play even knight takes e5. Or even queen e2 you can play and then castle long with very simple position. However, the main continuation is knight d7, and then we play bishop c4, and only move black has here is pawn c6. Notice that knight f6 is very bad because of knight g5, and there is no good way to defend f7 pawn, and bishop e7 is maybe even worse. Because after d takes e, black has no way to capture on e5, because d takes e will be met by queen d5, and black may resign right here, 
and after knight takes e5, knight takes e5, d takes e and queen h5, black is also lost because they have to go g6, protect f7, queen takes e5, knight f6 and bishop h6 with the idea of bishop g7 gives white tremendous positional advantage and the extra pawn on top of it. So those are not acceptable continuations. So the only acceptable continuation here in <coughs> this uh, position is c6 move. Then what I would recommend is castling and after black plays bishop e7, then simply go de, that's the easy way to play this opening. d takes e, knight g5, attacking the f7 pawn. Black has two moves, knight h6, which will be followed by queen h5, black castles, and then simply knight c3, which gives white advantage because of badly placed knight on h6, or the other continuation black has in this position, bishop takes g5, queen h5, threatening queen takes f7 mate, and after queen e7, bishop takes g5, knight f6, and queen h4, again, white has two bishops and better position. White is better. That's all you need to know to get small advantage in Philidor defense. And in Philidor actually is the opening only, only upside of this defense for black that black plays without weaknesses. But they are going to have passive position for a long, long time. White has in every variation some positional advantage. That cover, that will be end of covering the Philidor defense.